Hello, I'm Greg Crinklaw, the developer of SkyTools. In this video, we are going to look at how to use the SkyTools Exposure Calculator. From the name, you might expect this to be part of the SkyTools system for imaging, perhaps used to calculate your sub-exposures during the planning process. But in fact, those kinds of calculations are built into the tools such as the scheduler, ACP expert, or real-time imaging. The exposure calculator might better be called the exposure explorer, or maybe even the imaging explorer. Its purpose is to help you explore your options, to see what your imaging system is capable of. It might be best thought of as a strategic tool. It can help you decide how you want to approach imaging a target. Should I use narrowband filters or LRGB? How much total exposure time will it take to do the project? Is the imaging system even capable of obtaining my goals? And if so, what is the best way to go about it? It is also a good tool for exploring the capabilities of your imaging system in general. Rather than spend hours taking images to learn what works best by trial and error, you could use the calculator to try different targets and different settings to see what works well before you even start imaging. And if you were considering buying a new telescope or camera, you could preview the capabilities of the new system. The exposure calculator can be open from just about any tool. The idea is to start from the context of that tool, often via a right click. The target object, imaging system, location, and date are inherited from that context. As an example, I'll right click on the Dumbbell Nebula and open the calculator. I could have selected the dumbbell and pressed the E key as well. The date, location, imaging system, and the target object have all been obtained from the target selection tool. There's a lot of information presented, and there are a lot of settings, but we should focus on these two calculators here. The one on the right can calculate the SNR for a stack of exposures in a given filter. The one in the middle does the reverse. Given a target SNR, it calculates the total exposure time required to reach it. Everything else is either informational or a setting that can be changed. Starting at the top, we have the date. This is the date for the evening. The next morning is one day ahead of this. Here is the imaging system and location. These were all inherited when we opened the calculator. Many parts of SkyTools will make assumptions and choices in order to simplify things. A filter is often automatically chosen, for instance. But this calculator is meant to dig down into the minute details, which is why there are so many settings. This is the focal configuration. For most systems, it's going to stay at primary focus. For systems with exchangeable focal changers, we can make that selection here. For standalone cameras, such as a DSLR, this will be the lens. Next is the filter, binning, and gain. You will find that in practice, the gain usually makes little difference when it comes to SNR, which is what this calculator is based on. When you set up your camera, you entered a value for the read noise that usually assumed a choice of gain. For many variable gain cameras, the gain affects the read noise to some extent. Most of the time, you will choose the optimum gain for the camera and then just stick with that. This is the standard night bar. As always, the red dashed line is the altitude of the target object. That and the shading of the darkness of the sky are all you really need to pay attention to in most cases. This table breaks the night into segments based on the IQ. It is broken into more segments than we see on the other tools. Two segments may have similar IQ, but significantly different seeing or ideal sub-exposure times. If I select one, the start and end times are automatically entered into the calculators. Let's have a quick look at the columns. This is the IQ for the time period, which is based on the QC, Q, and QRes values. Q 
is the quality of the time period based on SNR alone. QRES is the quality based on the resolution, which is affected by the seeing, weather, altitude, and the type of object. These are on a scale of 0 to 100, where 100 is as good as it gets for this location. QC is a combination of Q and QRES, and it is QC that is summarized by the IQ rating. For example, a QC value of 90 or more is an IQ of A. SNR is the total SNR that can be obtained over the time period. Res is the mean resolution. The start, end, and duration of the time period are here. And num is the number of exposures that went into the stack that the total SNR refers to. Lastly, I want to talk about the so-called ideal exposure time. This is the ideal sky-limited sub-exposure time that you will see calculated by various online calculators. This was an early attempt at determining the best sub-exposure time based on the idea that the sky brightness will become the dominant source of noise as the sky becomes brighter. In practice, this value is of limited use, and SkyTools no longer makes use of it directly. Don't confuse this with the optimum sub-exposure times recommended by Sky Tools, which are calculated directly by trying different sub-exposure times and then choosing the one that produced the highest SNR. We can skip forward and back by nights here. Check the box here to use auto weather. If not checked, the weather settings down here are used and you can modify them. Remember, Auto Weather uses the monthly weather and typical scene set for the location. Check Auto Update to reset everything when you change the night. If you want your time selections to remain where they are, then leave this unchecked. The camera data is just informational, although it does update with changes to the focal configuration or binning. Remember, when SkyTools calculates the resolution, it's not the simple pixel scale, which is often mistakenly called the resolution of the detector. The resolution includes seeing and indicates the smallest detail that could be imaged under the current conditions. So now we'll turn to the actual calculators. This one calculates the signal to noise ratio for a stack of exposures starting at a specific time on this specific night. This is the start time. It is marked on the night bar by the vertical line here. The total exposure time is specified here. The end of the exposure period is indicated by a second vertical line. We can switch the units as wanted. The sub-exposure time goes here. We can enter it manually or allow SkyTools to calculate it automatically. When set to auto, the sub-exposure time will be calculated that will maximize the total SNR for the stack within the given time. Only those sub-exposure times that are allowed for this imaging system will be used. The calculation takes into account the readout time needed between each exposure that was specified for the imaging system. So long readout times will favor longer exposures in order to minimize the time spent not exposing. The results appear here. What is displayed depends on the type of object. Note that it lists the total time spent exposing and the time spent reading out the detector. This is the total signal for the target object. For an extended object like this, it is the mean signal for each pixel for the object. The sky signal per pixel is also listed. We can reverse this calculation in the exposure time calculator, where we specify a target SNR, and then it calculates the total exposure time required to reach it. The start time is taken from the SNR calculator and is always the same. We select the SNR that we want here. Choose Specify to enter an arbitrary SNR to the right. 
The sub-exposure times work like on the SNR calculator. The calculators normally use the selected weather conditions seeing an altitude of the object. If we check ideal conditions, these things are ignored. Check this box to calculate the exposure time required to reach the specified SNR under the best possible conditions at this location rather than the current selections. You may see minor differences in the results of the two calculators. This is due to differences in the way the calculators work, which can result in small differences. If you are unable to obtain a result for the exposure time calculator, it is either because there wasn't enough signal to reach the SNR during the night, or that the signal was too high, resulting in saturation, blooming, or clipping. In these cases, it can't calculate an exposure time. A stellar object such as a star, minor planet, or quasar has an alternative means of defining the SNR. Normally, the SNR is calculated for the total signal of the object, which is spread across the detector via a point spread function. In some cases, such as astrometry, you may also want to calculate the peak SNR. This uses the same signal at the peak, or the center, the brightest part of the star. Unlike the SNR from the total signal, this number is highly dependent on the seeing conditions at the time of the exposure, and is less reliable for that reason. Be sure to set the scene carefully when using this type of SNR, which can be selected here for stellar objects. Previously, we left the Exposed 4 settings at the defaults, but this is an important selection that could be easily overlooked. To get the most out of the calculator, we need to pay careful attention to it. Many target objects have bright and faint parts to them. The SNR calculation depends on the target signal, so we need to specify what part of the object to calculate the SNR for. For example, for the same exposure time, the SNR will be high for the central part of a galaxy, lower for the spiral arms, and lower still for the faint halo. In some cases, we may be happy with a good SNR for the central part. For others, we may be trying to go for the faint halo. The faint halo will always take more total exposure time to reach the same SNR, so be sure to set this to meet your expectations. So that's the basics. See the advanced exposure calculator tutorial for a deeper dive. Clear skies, and thanks for watching.